Okay, first thing to do is to open up a new document. So I'm going to go to File and New. I'm going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call it something like My Banner. It doesn't really matter as long as you know what it's called. And I want it to be 980 pixels. Make sure it's deaf and says pixels at wide. And I'm, I'm going to make it 90 um, pixels high. Resolution 72 is perfect. That's what we want. And a white background is all fine. So I'm going to hit OK. That's going to create my banner shape for me. So there's nothing on there at the moment. On the right hand side, you'll see I've got my, my layers panel open. At the moment, I've got one layer and it's locked and it's visible. So I can see it, but I can't do anything with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a new layer. I'm going to come down here, hit new layer. There's my new layer. And I'm going to rename this one by clicking on the word layer. And I'm going to call this um, colored background or colored BCG, so something like that. And on this layer, I'm going to put some color in. Now, if all I wanted to do was a single color, I could use this tool here, which is the paint bucket. And to find the suitable color, I just click, click on the foreground color. Lots of ways of choosing colors. I can go through down here and, and pick a color, or I can um, go to the color libraries. I can choose something from one of these libraries. There's lots of different ways of doing it. But say I wanted a background color like that, I'd say OK. And then I'd get my paint bucket tool and pour the color in. Another option is that I might want to use a gradient. So if I hold down my paint bucket tool, underneath it, there's one called the gradient tool, or above it in this case. And I'm going to select that one. And you see, as soon as I've done that, up here in my properties um, box, I get the idea of a, of a gradient. Now, there's different ones I can choose from. Or if I choose to, I can make my own. So if I want to make my own, I double click up here. And I basically start mixing colors. So if I didn't want purple and green, say instead of green, I wanted to have a different color. So I'm going to choose maybe a red. Okay, go for a kind of pinky color there and say OK. You can see straight away that the way the gradient looks has changed. I can move my, this one here is to do with where the light starts and stops between the two colors. I can even, if I choose to, add extra colors in. So I can click somewhere, puts another little box in. Maybe I will have a blue this time. Say OK. And you can see again now, I get this change of gradient. Now you can play with this as much as you want. It's up to you. Once you're happy with the gradient, you say OK. You can see up here now in the left, my gradient's changed. All I'm going to do is use my gradient tool to put it on. I can make a gradient run from left to right by dragging this way. I can go from right to left. You can see the gradient's different. I can go from top to bottom, or I can go from bottom to top, and I can put on any kind of angle I want. So I've got a whole range of weird kind of colors I can do using that technique. I'm just going to keep it simple and go from left to right. There's my gradient fill. So that's my colored background. That's all I'm going to do with this one. Next thing I might want to do is I might want to add some text on. So I'm going to click on my text tool. I'm going to click my text tool onto the um, page. And you'll see what will happen as that happens is it will create for me a new layer. OK, there's my new layer. It's just popped in. It's called layer one at the moment. I'm just going to type something in. I'm going to say Mr. Morgan's banner. OK, now you can see that the type and the, the font and the color was already set from whatever I did last time. So if I wanted to change that, I can highlight over it and I can say choose a different font. And if I want to choose a different size, I could I choose a different color. So maybe I'll go for a uh, quite a bright color, maybe a yellow even. Say OK to that and click the tick up here. So there's my banner. If I use my move tool, I can reposition it. In fact, if I use my move tool and grab the handle, so I've made sure I've got this show transform ticked, means I can see the handles to grab it. I can drag it around and move it about and do things with it. When I'm happy, I click my tick, and you can see now my text layer has actually been renamed to the name of the text that I put in there. So we can always see what I'm working on. If I click on the arrow on the eye here, you can see it hides it. So I can play around with the layers. Whichever the top layer is, is the furthest is the closest thing to us as we look at it. So if you think about layers on top of each other, Morgan's banner is the thing that's closest to the screen. Okay. Now what I might want to do to that is put some special effects on it. So if I wanted to make the text look different, instead of clicking on the name, I move to the right hand side of it and double click into the space here, and I get what's called the function or the, the, the styles box coming up. There's various things I can do on there, and if I move this the point where I can see it. I've got preview ticks. So if I put a drop shadow on, you can see that affects the way that text looks. 
I can put outer glow on. That does something different to it again. Inner glow, slightly different effect. I can even add bevels and contours and all sorts of strange effects onto the text. And within each of these, so if I was in drop shadow, you can see I get a whole set of things I can play with here to do with opacity and color and so on. Whichever one I choose, it's got its own separate set of um, options that can be altered along the way. So you can have a good play with that. But I'm going to say OK for now. So you'll see now that not only have I got my text in there, but underneath my text layer, I've got the special effects for that particular um, layer. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is maybe add an image to my banner. Now I could just go onto something like Google Images and find an image that way, or I could create one of my own. Doesn't really matter. Um, you can use JPEG images, or if you want to have ones with transparent backgrounds, maybe go for what's called a PNG image. Um, now you can save, or you can rather you can search for those. I'm going to open one up here. I've got there's one I've made before called uh, Pink Loretto logo. I'm going to open that. You could just do a special, uh, do an advanced search on Google and say that you only want to look for PNG files. Anyway, I'm going to drag this down so that I've got this picture floating. So I've still got my banner image here, but instead of in tab view now, I've got my logo just floating. That means if I use the move tool, I can grab this image and I can drag it out and drop it onto my banner. And you see, as soon as I've done that, it's created me a new, lo a new layer. I'm going to rename this layer and call it logo left. The reason I'm calling it logo left is because in a moment I'm going to make a logo right. So I'm going to grab this one and position it okay, somewhere over here. And if I'm happy with that, now again, I, if I wanted to, I could double click and put special effects onto this logo as well, like I did with the text. I'm not going to for the moment, but I am going to right click on this one and I'm going to say duplicate my layer. And this time, I'm going to call it logo right. So there's my logo right. I'm going to click OK. doesn't look like anything's happened, but I've actually got two copies here. Now you'll see on the right hand side, I'm actually on the logo right layer. I'm going to drag this one across, pop it up over there, and there's my um, finished banner. So all I need to do now is I need to save my Photoshop file, and I also need to f save a JPEG version of it. So I'm going to do File, Save As, and the first version, I'm going to put it back into my um, Morgan web folder and I'm going to put it inside my images folder so I know where it is. This one's called my banner and it's a Photoshop PSD which is what I want. I'm going to hit save. Click OK. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do file save as again but this time instead of Photoshop I'm going to choose a JPEG image type. Still called my banner. It's not a problem. It won't overwrite the other one because it's a different file type. Same location images and hit save. And probably what you want to have is high quality and say OK. OK, so now you've created your banner. In the next video, you'll see how to put that into your template file inside Dreamweaver.